<clears throat> right then. Um, computer. <sighs> Verbal commands not working today. Okay, and he heads <laughs> over to the uh, to the data center, the communications hub. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll type in um, Ardraxis. Okay. Uh, and look, look that up in the ship's files. Absolutely. Um, the relay flashes and um, you see that just behind you where um, Ichabon is, the revelator flashes up and shows you exactly where it is on the map in real time. Oh. Oh man, this revelator, I can see why half the galaxy wants to get its hands on it. Look at this. Yep, and no use keeping it idle as well. I think if we've got to find anything with this thing, we should uh, try to use this bad boy as much as possible. Um, can we do a systems check throughout the uh, throughout the ship? Uh, anything um, within sensor range as we uh, before we uh, before we speed up? Uh, you seem to be clear. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything. There, there doesn't seem to be anything that would be an obstacle for you to reach our Draxus at all. Right, okay. So, our Draxus. Do we want to make a stop at Enoch on the way? Or are we thinking, after we've conducted our business, go back there? Well, I think we're pretty close to Enoch as we are now, aren't we? You are indeed. You are just literally in, in orbit of it, pretty much. Oh, yeah, then no point. Might as well do it oh, while we're here. Anything. Are you... Are you no, well... You're, you're not far from Enoch at all. You're not far at all. It's on the way, I would imagine. Right. Because Anastasia might well be better by now. And I have my Mastiff down there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's whether we, we pick them up afterwards or before. Now, if it's on the way then I think maybe we head there before. We never know what sort of trouble we might might get into at this research facility on our Draxis. Agreed. So, um, would you like to put it put in the coordinates for the hospital there? Uh, well, I'm not pilot anymore. Someone took over from my pilot role, so... Yes, currently the pilot's very quiet. Um, not me anymore either. As uh, <laughs> someone else skills me. Yep. That's correct. Uh, yeah, I just remembered. Uh, Bohannon gives a nod. Um, uh, he jots down the coordinates taken from um, Ichabon's. Um, you know, he sort of takes them down and uh, punches him for the Saint Deplorus' sanitarium. And uh, yeah, so. Enoch slowly grows grows into view, and uh, he directs the ship towards the sa the sanitarium. And things look to be in order from the outside. Like, everything seems to be absolutely fine since you've last been there. Uh, you land, and the familiar cathedral entrance towering over is towering over you. And the familiar face of Sergeant Grosvenor and the current shift of guards walk over to greet you. Just quickly remind me before, are we still wanted on this planet? Didn't we start a bunch of shit with, like, the sisters and all that kind of shit? I believe we stirred them up uh, to look for psders, but they didn't find us. So... so yes, but we're not psychers. So that was on Daedalon. Yes. That was on Daedalon. This is Enoch. Yeah, this is uh, the Blessings Unheralded uh, episode, so this would have been... The dude following Nurgle, um, infiltrating the hospital. Oh, right, yeah. All okay. the way back there, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think we're clear on this one. Um, I don't think <laughs> anyone knows our name or knows this ship. You're very welcome on this planet, especially here. This is, this is yeah, you saved these guys a lot of trouble. Okay, um... Can we scan the? Can our ship do any sort of scan of the hospital or hospital area for any uh, Xenos life forms? Uh, you can use. Yep, yeah, you can do an Ospec scan. Um, so indications show that there's no uh, Xenos 
platforms in the vicinity. Right, okay. So, um, let's land, let land us there then, uh, Baron. Yep, yeah, so he punches in, flies you down, and you land nice and safely onto the, um, the docking bay just outside the cathedral. And Sergeant Grasvenor and the current shifter guards, they sort of, they, they notice the plane and they, they, they walk, um, plane's not plane, is it? It's a starship. And they walk over towards you guys. Um, they're not obviously familiar with the, um, the, the current vessel that you're in. So they, they walk over, they, they don't look like they're taking any particular, um, any chances or anything like that. They're not, they're, they're just being kind of wary and they're just, you know, just coming over. Okay. Sergeant, a pleasure to see you again. How is everything uh, planet side? Oh, oh friends. Um, sorry, I, I didn't recognise your ship. It appears you've got your own now. We have been busy, and um, the fruits of our labours uh, and landed us this ship, let's say. Excellent. I take it things went well on Daedalon then. I expected you to return with Inquisitor Mendax. Ah, about Daedalon. Um, quite a troublesome place, Daedalon. Um, especially down in the uh, down in the crypts uh, that we went in in Daedalon. Um, some interesting, uh, an interesting place. Very dangerous, I'd have to say. Um, and even above ground, a lot of those, uh, we had a lot of sisters around there, and I th think that they were doing a sterling job keeping the place safe. I see. Right. Well, um, about Mendax, is she with you, or did you part ways? I mean, I don't know her personally. Um, can I do like a, a, a knowledge check? What do we do with Mendez? Um, so I can I can absolutely tell you that. So um, instead of returning the Revelator, which is what she charged you with finding, you yeah. kind of just skip. You just ignored her and didn't return it to her at all. So she's probably she's probably out there looking for you um, <laughs> somewhere. She's pissed. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's probably not in the nicest of places when it comes to you guys right now. Yeah, so Mendes, um, yeah, we had, we did have, uh, we did have some work to do for Mendes, and we did carry it out. So that does stand us in good stead. Mm. Um, we haven't uh, had the opportunity to report back uh, just yet. Um, we, as I said, we have, we have been very busy, and there have been some other very pressing matters, very personal matters, actually. Probably best not to go into them right now. There's some very personal, pressing matters that have kind of kept us away from Mendez, but she certainly is on our list of people to see. Right. Well, I see. Possibly from afar. Well, as I said, I, I don't know her personally. I just know that um, she does have a fair amount of influence in the local system, hence why she asked me to uh, seek some, some um, she would say, capable agents to help her in a, her, um, her assignment. Um, if oh, and, and you did find some capable agents. I tell you very, <laughs> tell you very much. We have, we are a very successful bunch. Of this look, looking upon the, our starship, not too carefully, mind. And you can see that there's been a great deal of success in our endeavours recently. Uh, but of course, yeah, very difficult family matters to attend to. Um, so, Sergeant, tell me about our patient. Then tell me about our patient. So, how has Anastasia? Uh, how, how's her recovery been? Uh, um, Can we Anastasia, see her? Uh, well, Anastasia has been... Um, she's been sanctioned. It's... She's been given a job as an Inquisitor. She's off to uh, do dole out the Lord of the Emperor. Em excellent. Quite, quite the opposite, I'm afraid. Ah, um, the other meaning. Ah. Something that's 
that's really out of my control, if I'm honest. Uh, whether it was the realisation that her lover was working with the Gene Stealer Menace, or the side effect of the Lictus Venom, or simply the whim of the Inquisition, she's been sanctioned by the Inquisition and taken to Charybdian. I can try and pull some strings to find out some information, talk to some contacts, and get some details. Are you inferring that the Inquisition do things on a whim? They don't do it as a well thought out plan? Well, you and I both know Anastasia very well, and to assume that she has had a breakdown of such, it doesn't it doesn't seem like her. She's she's Vostroyan. She's one of the toughest toughest people I know. Something like this wouldn't affect her mentally and So something more nefarious may be afoot. I don't I I don't know. I'm I'm no medical expert, but it was uh, suggested that she had had an episode, and she's been taken to Charybdian. Uh, like I said, how, I can... how far is uh, Charybdian from here? Is is she would an outside uh, medical expert be able to um, maybe see her? Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we have met with a few physicians uh, along our along our way, and actually some of us uh, some of us on the ship do have a little expertise. Now I'm not saying that we are any better or worse than the physicians that took her off world, but I think, uh, I think flashes the badge. I think there's I think there's room to, uh, to let a few visitors see her, don't you think? Especially some close friends of hers, like us. I, I, I simply do not know. Um, it will take me some time to find out from my contacts, but I, I'd have to investigate. I really would, mm. have, I would have to I'd, dedicate some time to this. We'd certainly be very grateful to find out about our dear friend. Um, I, I, I just, I just can't, just, I just couldn't sleep well at night knowing that she's experienced such pain and troubles. Mm. Um, of this Linkedin's venom, well, I hardly heard of the stuff myself, but it was dreadful business, you know. Yes, well, she was set to make an absolutely full recovery, so this the idea that she's been taken and sanctioned is just daunting to me, but I don't make the rules, and mm. when the Inquisition comes knocking, obviously I follow my orders to the, um, to the letter. It's not my place to question those above me. No, absolutely, and the Emperor protects. He does indeed. Uh, and, and we must let the Inquisition, as I well know, I go about their business. Mm. I'm sure there's a plan, but, um, and maybe, uh, and maybe these are people that I might have, might have, uh, might have met before. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can talk some sense into them, or at least uh, get us access. I, you, it, we would really appreciate you finding out a little bit more about these, the Inquisition that took her, and uh, whether, whether we have a chance at even a visit. Of course. Um, yes, it it does trouble me. I'll I'll see what I can do. I'll see what strings I can pull. I've got a few contacts there um, in the in the department, but um, leave it with me. I I'll, yeah. I'll try and get this done as quickly as I possibly can. I don't want her to be in there for too long. Very good. Um, and uh, I left a mastiff in care here. My cyber mastiff. Um, have you have you seen? Oh. Have you seen that? Oh, Lancelot, of course. And she just she, she whistles, and um, he comes bounding over, um, and then obediently just sits down next to your side, as he's as his programming has taught him. All yours. Wonderful, Lancelot. Great, great to be in his company again. It's been. Uh, there's just something about the companionship of a. Of something so obedient yet something so, so wild at heart, you know. Absolutely, and um, we have since had a replacement, so um, you're absolutely free to take him. And uh, yeah, he's yours, as I promise. Fantastic. Any training uh, that he's received whilst I've been off world? <laughs> no, he's all but been gathering dust in our armory. So um, he's yours to train. 
but yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, he hasn't really hasn't really taken to anyone since you left. So, hmm. and um, and what of the general goings on on Enoch? Any news to report other than uh, other than our our comrade Anastasia? Uh, not really, to be honest. It's been rather quiet. Been rather boring since you stopped that um, that chaos incursion here in the uh, the facilities. Apart from obviously losing Anastasia, nothing really has been going on. Uh, Philanon has since um, changed changed his position and he's headed back to Avacarus. Um That would be the tech priest that was um, talking to Ichabon. Um, he's since left this facility and. Uh, yeah, that's that's really been it. Everything seems to be running quite quite ordinarily, which is good is rather good for me. And very good not to have new additions to uh to the sanctum. Of course it uh it's a it, whilst it provides a wonderful safety net for Enoch, we just we just want to keep each other safe, don't we? And out of the out of care. Yes, quite. So, yes. Well, um, we do have further business to attend uh, to off-world, but of course, um, we are, you know, we have a little time on our hands. Um, is there anything, uh, anything to show us, or anything uh, that any of your guard? need to talk to us about before we before we head off hmm. well you're welcome obviously to re rearm yourselves in our armory though you won't find anything outside of standard issue in there um, mm. and of course you're more than welcome to chat to any of the guards here and uh, mingle for a bit um, yeah whatever we can help you with if you need if you need a hand with whatever it is that's troubling you please feel free to give us a shout. We're more than welcome to uh, to assist you in any way that we can. Well, that is good. I think uh, I think we might like one of those standard Imperium supply boxes. We have uh, we have need for a little bit more food and water on the uh, on the starship. Uh, one of those one of those crates and uh, and one of the infirmary resupply boxes as well. I think that would be good uh, just to make sure we we have everything we need on board. Absolutely. Done. And she clicks her fingers to one of the um, one of the recruits and they look at her. She's like, well, go on then. Get some supplies. You heard the man. And uh, he runs off, um, sort of taking another one with him. So, while they're off getting supplies, what is this personal matter, you're, if you don't mind me asking, that you're um, attending to? Well, we it's our friend of ours. Um, he... He ran into some trouble with the uh, with a a companion of his that went missing. So we've had a, a great deal of trouble trying to locate uh, locate a very dear friend that he was living with, um, and uh, he's on, he's back on board and he's you know he's still still dealing with it, still still processing that I think. But he uh, we 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 did have some trouble with a. With a couple of cults, yeah, a couple of cults. Um, nothing, uh, nothing, nef nothing too nefarious, but you know, these sort of these these the enthusiastic sorts that do do get ideas in their own head, you know. That uh, it, you know, it, it it started off as just looking for someone, but uh, yeah, very difficult matter, really. Don't want to don't want to elaborate too much on that one. I think. Uh, with our guy back on board, I think I think it's just best to best to leave that one. Absolutely, All right. And then you can see the two recruits come back, and um, they hand over the they hand they're, they're really struggling with these crates. They're on wheels, but they're they're struggling. And then your two Ogrim friends, Brick and Jab, they just take a step off, give them here, pick them up, and they just sling them over their shoulders, and they carry these crates into the ship and just plonk them down in the storage room. Oh, I see you've got some muscle there. Um, wow. Thank you, boys. 
Uh, see these supplies get to the right parts of the ship, please. We uh, we don't want those. We don't want the facilities running out of the essentials now, do we? Uh, and take something for yourselves, of course. We'll do, boss. And the other one sort of turns as well and goes. I'll put them in the boxy room with all the other boxes. Yeah, I thought you would. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> right. I mean, you'll need the uh, you'll need the servitors on that one, I think. <laughs> right. Well. Right. We can't take up any more of your time. I think. Uh, I think we'd best be on our way. So, pleasure seeing you again, and we'll uh, we'll let you know how things go, and maybe we can send one of our off-world messages to you, uh, finding out about your progress on how Anastasia is on Caridium and what uh, what the Inquisition let you know. So um, you send us one of the off world an off world message, and uh, or maybe maybe we'll hear back from you within the next few days. She um, rummages around in her pocket and she pulls out a data card and she um, throws it to Ichabon. She's like, "There's my details. If you need to contact me, that's how you get hold of me. Just punch that into your into your um, system." No worries. Right. Yes. Um, do take care, and of course, contact me if you need anything. Um, we can't do much, but we can obviously provide you with um, weaponry and, and of course, supplies, food, food and such. Um, good luck. And she sort of issues her, her um, issues her recruit recruits to go back in. All right. All right. So we head on to the ship. Everything. Yeah, we done here. Yeah, I think we are. I've been good to get some extra supplies. Pl plenty of us on ship now. So. Yeah. You want to um, punch in the punch in the coordinates? Right. Head over to your requiem. Punch it in. I look over. Alec, all yours. And. Um, the dip out, <laughs> bow graciously, let him take the wheel. I'll give eyes over to um, uh, the rest of the party. <laughs> um, just in case we encounter any trouble, I uh, go and place myself in the gunnery seat. Yeah, sure, okay. Let me just check. Did we get a message in the chat? Is that someone? What's Al's character called? Oh, Bo Bohannon. It's called. It's called Bohannon. Okay. Uh, so, as you approach Adraxis, as I imagine you are, everything seems to be eerily quiet. On the way there, mm -hmm. I just kind of find myself just playing with the requiem. I'm just gonna be like glossing through, just looking at locations and seeing. Like, I'm just gonna tap in, just like I want to like. To just play with it just to see what it's capable of like how far it can go yeah so um, if you were to zoom in you can mm. you can almost see um, replicated almost perfectly uh, weather systems so you can't go any further than that but you can almost see things like local cloud systems and thunderstorms and things like that so you can almost judge what state a planet is in, like, like um, climatically, just by looking at the revelator. If you were to zoom out, um, it simply ends at the local system, and um, yeah, that uh, that's roughly how it works. Um, but cleverly enough, yeah, you can zoom right in to look at the planet's local systems, which is, I think is quite cool. Weather systems. That's cool. If I was to like, I, I I would have to pinpoint it to an area. I'd like traject, position our trajectory, and like find the square and zoom in as close as there. I want to see whether I see us go past. Okay, you don't. Like, you, you don't. don't I don't. See a ship. You don't see any ships. No, it seems to just work off of the planets. Okay, hmm. that's interesting. So is it more focused on? Is it a bit like Google Maps that every so often it updates? It's only objects that are there <laughs> long enough that it can keep track of. 
yeah, it's uh, it's an it's an ancient technology based off Google Maps. <laughs> no, yes, uh, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it seems to be um, everything seems to be real time. So okay. it's not just like a visual representation of a planet with a visual representation mm. of what the climate is. It seems to be real time up, and mm. it seems to work on almost work on. I want to say organics, but obviously. That was going to be my next station because I would find like I I can't think of one like off the top of my head, but like a space station, like an, a manufactured stationary space station, and see where I can zoom in onto a a construct, not a not a, a moon or anything like that. Just okay. Like a... um, if you were to zoom in on Avacarus, which is like a machine world, um, mm -hmm. you can see you can see the the layouts of buildings and cities global wide cities and things you can see that it seems to be focusing on the planets and the features of the planet as opposed to um, anything that might be coming to and from it or anything that involves people or anything like that it's so we can't yeah, yeah. so we can't use it like a surveillance camera to look at a certain <laughs> area to see whether people are coming and going but we can see like the state of the planet yeah 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 that's that's pretty much how it works yeah that's cool. okay Good. Does it have any sort of overlay? Does, is it literally able to display information, or is it just give you a, a visual of the place? So the local plan, it is. <laughs> it is <laughs> the um, it's it's displayed so that the planets have their own labels to them. So if you were to zoom right out, you could see the labels and not necessarily the planets. But if you zoom okay. right in, the sort of the label follows the planet as you zoom in. But okay. it's in it's in an indecipherable language that none of you can understand, or even mm -hmm. begin to comprehend. Right. Okay. Who knows? In time. Am I able to do a scholar check to see if I can work out okay. any sort of markers yeah. in the language? Sure, you can all do that, seeing as you've all had time to look at this. Yeah, so I think that's like something check. I'd be interested in as well. Nope. <laughs> Amadel is dumbfounded. Pretty pictures. Fabio has an inkling. And Rob, I think you get a plus two to any Xenos checks, don't you, on things? Oh yeah, I do. So you you're pretty that? you're pretty certain that this is um that this is this is Necron. That the language is, is like a Necron of, of Necron origin. However, n none of you speak it, and um, Fabio, you would understand that you could have had hazarded a guess that it was probably Necron during your time of seeing things pass be passed around from from the the wayward the wayward person that you've interrogated that happens to have a bit of a Zenos tech on them of this nature. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Got a little bit further understanding this thing and its its limitations, its abilities. But uh, yeah, there are some individuals that may be able to help us with it. Understanding the Necron side of it, potentially. Okay. Um, and people we could trust with this thing as well. They, I mean, I have sort of made you aware of my heritage. Um, but there are people that are of my ilk that would some of the older have knowledge of the histories of my kind right um, I'm not really a student of history, you want to run me through what that kind of means? well um, a long, long like genuinely very very long time ago, pre humanity um, pretty much um, the Necrons that are now machines um, were a living organism and uh, then they upset another race that are no longer around known as the Old Ones. We probably had another name for them but you know the Imperium writes the history and um, they created us to stop the Necron Tur as they were once known the Necronter then discovered some powerful beings akin almost to gods, Satan, um, and they tricked the Necronter into supplying them with souls and turned them into 
metal machines. Uh, their leader, um, realizing what he'd done, put them to sleep and uh, went and basically had a tantrum in the void um, and has. I don't, I don't think Amonel would know if. Uh, it, well, unless he's encountered Necrons, would know that the Silent King is awake and well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he's in this side of the Imperium, so I would no. say no. That's yeah. So he wouldn't be aware of that. So, but yes. So there are probably archives at a place that has made contact with me whilst we were on the planet we just left in the. Uh, sanatorium who um, wish to meet there is likely libraries at the very least or some of the much older beings there who would have more knowledge maybe yeah, yeah I just condensed a few hundred thousand years into <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright yeah well I do have to warn you that I'm not sure how welcome Imperium individuals will be. I mean, everyone gets their start somewhere, right? And everyone ends yes. up somewhere else. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. I, I, for one, do not think <clears throat> that that is a place the Emperor protects. Um, I'm not sure you really possible. believe that anymore. <laughs> well, I have to admit I haven't felt particularly protected by your empire, emperor, in the last few days. It does seem does seem to be missing in action. Am I, radi- Am I radicalizing Fabio? Is that what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> You're all influencing each each other to be <laughs> off the path. <laughs> I love it. I think everyone's on a, on his own path. There is like uh, they're doing robot stuff. That's kind of cool, but <laughs> I love it. They're oh, undead. That's that's like you know. I'm an Eldari Ranger. I literally am allowed to do this. It's like my get out of free jail free card um, yeah. as a. Ranger. Mm. Uh. <laughs> powering machines on undead is like powering like a light from a like a lemon. Like it's not really like the, <laughs> the same. <laughs> it's like getting pure mechanus. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the Necrons themselves are a weird creation. They basically just had their souls. So that's the bit I missed. Basically, the Devourer, as he was known, um, literally sucked out their souls. Um, Cool. Because he discovered they tasted better than stars. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Yeah. Sweet. But All right, cool. Should we head down? As you haven't seen anything, Ikvon, should we head down to the surface? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if you pull us in, um, I'm an, oh, oh, no, that's you. Uh, new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. B. <laughs> so... Uh, everything seems very really quiet, and uh, you can't spot any spacecraft, and it seems like you guys are the first ones here. Um, the only giveaway detail is the red distress beacon light lit up on the main dome of the facility. Ardraxis, for the most part, is a small, rocky, featureless planetoid situated dead centre between the other planets of the system. It's essentially the perfect location for one of Lord Overon's many facilities. Uh, the planetoid, strangely, has managed to retain somewhat of a breathable atmosphere. Um, why does it appear strange that it's maintained a breathable atmosphere? Is there a cataclysmic event that we should be aware of before going down? Just that it's a small planetoid, and you okay. just sort of think to yourself that something like this wouldn't be able to maintain an atmosphere, but... Not, not enough gravitational force. Yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. The gravity on this this is seems to be close to Terran gravity, so you should be okay. I mean, if it's if it's a small planet, though, it's, yeah. Um, that's fine. Cool. Um, it could um, be it could be part of the facility. The facility could be generating both mm, that's what synthetic gravity for, and cool. an atmosphere. So. Mm-hmm. 
But you, that's, yeah, that's your assumption. Can we do the sweeps then? Yeah. All right. Is, is that what we get from like a, a sweep where that we know where there's pretty full atmosphere down there? Yeah. Um, in yeah. general world. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Are we at a range that we have some form of scanner on board? Um, are we not completely au fait with what our sh new ship can actually do? Do we have any form of um, tech to discern if there's any signs of life? Ichabon can confirm that there is. Yep. Cool. Yep. Can we confirm? Is it like one life signature or, you know, is it indiscernible? Um, so as you land, because you'd have to be very close for it to work. Yep. As you land, um, the scan goes out and comes back that there are life forms. Though you can't really tell <laughs> what form they are. There are life forms inside the facility. Yeah, I'm getting a read of some stuff. Um, not getting any more data. Aside from that, they're trying to keep themselves hidden or something, or maybe the sensors aren't strong enough from here. Um, I'm gonna have to go find out, unless we can find a way to boost this thing. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that from here. Unfortunately, not at the moment. But there's always the potential for some upgrades. In mm. terms of weapon systems, mm -hmm. what do we currently have on this ship? So the ship has. Um, it has, it has the basic facilities, um, it has two, they're not, they are they are types of LAS cannons, but um, okay. they're a lot, bit stronger to punch through something. Um, mm. They're fitted to the, to the front, so you'd have to be forward facing whatever you wanted to shoot. Right. Cool. So that's forward arc. Are there any, is that, are that the only armaments we have? Yeah, it is, apart from the standard shield. Um, and void shield and everything. Yeah, cool. That's fine. Just in case we do need to blast the planet and make a hasty getaway. Um, <laughs> well, should we head out? Just because I'm, as we're gearing up as well, I'm realizing something about myself. Do I? I'm not so far gone machine-wise that I don't need to breathe, right? You are a. Ooh, good question. I believe. Part of um, being a Skitaria means that you don't need to breathe. Let me just check. I mean, you're mostly poisoning yourself with your. You don't bleed. Anyway. You don't get affected by bleed effects. You might bleed, but it's it would never be enough to kill you. So yeah. breathing is an interesting one. Let me just bring it. No, up. I I am immune. I am immune to bleeding. Yeah. Uh, two seconds. Let me just double check that. I'm tempted to say you. Yeah, I just can. But I I think it would be depend on what you'd have installed as it were because you could have some form of respirator system let's mm. have a look where are we if not i'm happy to say i have like kind of like a basic one but then i that would be an upgrade i'm going to be looking for soon because just being able to get on the outside of the ship and stuff without <laughs> needing stuff would be sick yeah you're just going for a spacewalk again exactly yeah it just says here that you're immune to bleeding so um, um Okay, I still am reliant on air like a pesky mortal. For the time being, uh, yep, yeah, for the time being, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> That's on the list. <laughs> Excellent, I love that. That's on the upgrade list. <laughs> okay. Um, so I take it you all disembark the ship and prepare yourselves mm. accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so as you approach the facility, um, Ichabon, you can tell just by looking at the, the facility itself that the, uh, the emergency airlocks have been enabled upon a power outage, of all things. Okay. So it seems like they're on reserves for the power here, uh, hmm. or backup systems at least. Um, is there any sort of console I can interact with to get more information? Absolutely. There's one. Um, I will obviously switch you to um, the next map in a sec. But for now, yeah. um, in front of you, you can see um, a small panel that just says airlock enabled, um, emergency power mode um, active. Okay. Are we st stood in front of like a massive bulkhead. It looks it looks to be like some sort of facility slash bunker. Oh. Um, and there 
that there's this this main double doored um, airlock just in front of you, and a silent red light is flashing on the top of the the, the largest dome of this structure. Um. Any cameras on the outside of the door looking down at us, or any security systems that I need to be aware of? There are. There are cameras. Uh, they don't appear to be on. They don't appear to be functioning in this in this mode. Okay. Fabio, is there any way you can interface with this uh, machine and uh, discern what triggered this sort of uh, distress beacon? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I can do anything, but I think... <laughs> Oh no! Sorry, Ikavon. Yes. Oh, I yeah, have great yeah. faith in uh, Fabio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Yeah, making you feel bad. <laughs> that's all it is. Um, I will at this point have my rifle out, just in case you know Ikavon has something la- lunge at his head. Uh, oh my god, Ikavon! Look at that roll. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. This is this is not a difficult task for you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you uh, you extend your mechadendrite onto the interface and you punch in some. You sort of go a little bit blank as um, you punch through some numbers <laughs> and some codes that you're this, just the standard codes that you're used to using. And um, the first door of the airlock actually just opens with ease, and um, you are plunged. Let, I'll let this obviously load in for you guys. So let me know once once it's loaded, and uh, you will find yourself on the bottom left of this map. Oh yeah, I see us. Uh, you're plunged into darkness. I hope you're plunged into darkness. If things went well, yeah. you should be plunged. No, there into is a darkness. lot of blackness. Yes, except yeah, for one tiny corner. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and yeah, in front of you is yet another airlock because obviously two doors to every airlock. Yeah. I close the door behind us. Good show. Uh, we are we are in. And then all right, and I'm going to get to work with the second one. Make sure I like vent the area so it's all like filled with air and stuff or whatever it is. Um and then I'll punch in on the second one. Please do. Who are the two additional individuals we have with us? Ah, that's Amara and Kalia. Ah, that's it. Yeah, I didn't realise we brought them with us. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me. I knew they were on the ship. I didn't realise they were going to come. <laughs> cool. Um, oh, brilliant! You did roll. Um, yeah. And once again, you have no <laughs> issue in um, rem- in unlocking this door. Okay, so um, inside you can see the first room. This room appears to be a room built for minor study. A few research papers align the desks and microscopes, and microscopes sit on them too. Inside you notice moving, and while the lights have been shut off, leaving only the dim red of the emergency lights, you notice four figures carrying auto guns. Oh shit. (laughs) <laughs> Let me just slowly reveal them. Um, they've yet to see you, so if, if you would like to go first, Dick Avon, because you're right by the door, feel free to do that. Um, I'll tap on the now and the other guys and give them like the the symbols, universal symbols of I see three, um, four. <laughs> Can I make an awareness <laughs> test? To see if they look conscious, awake. You certainly can. Yes. Nine. They're shuffling around. Searching okay. for something, it seems. Um, I'm not entirely sure they're alive. However, I mean, weapons drawn, but possibly we don't, you know kill everything we see straight away just in case do they look they organic are. I mean they, look la- they, they, they they seem to be shuffling which I know is normally a concerning feature but if they are subdued by some form of thing they may be struggling with mental capacity 
I mean, they seem to have stopped now, so we could be okay. All right. I guess I'll, I'm asking, um, are they servitors? I, I, yeah, I walk out. Hey, what's up, fellas? <laughs> and get their attention. And that'll be my my turn to see what their initial reaction to us is. Okay. If they make any aggressive move, I shoot the crap out of them. Okay, well, they all draw their auto guns, pull their auto guns up to aim, and get ready to, to shoot. Come on. <laughs> um, could I react by trying to shoot them before they shoot him? <laughs> uh, you can, and Ichabon, you will have a free reaction. Um, if you want to duck away, go prone, defend yourself, now's the time to do it. Because they're all about to open fire on you. Okay. I will. <laughs> I will quickly. Um. I just kind of like flinch and duck and take like a, a defensive dodge or something. Sure, absolutely. So that's plus two to your to your defense if you're actively defending against these guys that are going to shoot at you. Yeah. Okay. And then Amanel, as a reaction, you are going to attempt to shoot a lot of them. Absolutely. Go for it. Um, so this is just a straight twelve. Um, yep. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can wow. you see from there? Oh, yeah, just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so that would actually potentially be a 13 um, in close range. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. Roll, roll, so, roll for damage. It's only, it's only one extra damage dice because... Um, oh, no, I, uh, did I pass enough that I can shift any exalted... Oh, I, 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 I'm only saying roll for damage. Oh no, just I can't. Habit. <laughs> oh, okay, it's a, it's eleven. Okay, which one did you shoot at? Tell me. Um, well, you that's shot at? so the one at the front, basically. That was right. my first shot. Um, his head but just you caves. Just goes yeah. boom. So you roll it. What you roll once, and then you add two ed, uh, two dn, sorry, to all attacks for each one beyond the first. Then you roll they damage once. do need once, to be in a line, so. though, so... Um, oh, okay. You'd probably get the one behind him here as well. He's oh, dead. Okay. Instantly. Cool. They just, bang, gone. Um, Ikavon, I would uh, make your way back here. And that, yeah, that would be... <laughs> okay. Um, let's gather my dice. I'm going to do some shooting at Ikavon. <laughs> At least I'm slightly reduced. Don't fret, Ikevon. These guys aren't very, aren't very good. And that was that was the day Ikevon died. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just entered the facility. They're not going to have the most important guys at the front, are they? I don't oh, know why not. Okay. Um, two, four, five. That is that is a one on the. Um, so he does. So the one in front, this this fella here. He he opens fire onto you with his auto gun, but it jams just as he's firing a spray of bullets. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. And um, what's your defense, please? My defense is two. My resilience is eight. So perfect. Okay. So you got a, didn't you get a plus two defense because you? Oh, you did. Dodged. Yeah. So is yours is four? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Four. So yeah. this the spray of bullets just goes around the floor, and uh, one of them just ricochets off of your mechadendrite. Doesn't seem to have caused any damage, um, but he's now his gun is now jammed for this turn. <laughs> um, and Fabio, if you would like to do please, so, be so kind. Yeah. So um, how close can I get to one of them? Um, so your movement is squares, basically. So I think you've got a movement of six, so you can move six squares. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think you so get right, right up. up. Yeah. Right up. Um, at this point, I've managed to get close enough to him to threaten him with my chainsaw. Yeah. Check roll 20. Oh. Uh, check roll 20, something's happened. Something's it happened. Seems okay. Seems okay on my end. What, what, what seems to be happening on your end? Uh, I'm in a new map. In a new map? Yeah, you... like a Mars effect uh, map. Let, um, me, let me put you back to that one, and then put you back to this one. There you go. 
Oh yeah, I've uh, managed to jump somewhere. I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I'm in a whole other room that's red. I can right, see okay. the other room. Two seconds. Oh. Don't go. look, close your eyes. <laughs> it's fine, I've cleverly hidden hidden anything that you might come up against. There um, we go. Um, thank you. It's alright, you seem to have moved again for some reason. I've moved oh. myself back to where I was originally. Oh, brilliant, okay. Um, cool. Cool. I don't know how I ended up over there. Cool. And <laughs> um, Fabio, how are you getting on? Are you okay? Um, it's. Uh, it looks like it's. I'm going to refresh roll twenty. Okay. Um, if if you do have problems, I have backed this up with one that doesn't have dynamic lighting. So, although the effect sorry, the effect is nice, we don't we don't necessarily need to have it if we don't have to. We'll get there. Um, so no, I think. So I'm in a. Well, where is my character? So I can see a map of the whole thing in grey. Okay. Whereas, where the room that we're in is in bright red. I think maybe you've managed to glitch and reveal the map to yourself. Well, that's fine. Um, what I'll do is I'll re-roll because I didn't look at it closely. So that's absolutely fine. Don't don't worry yourself over it. Um, all of you guys are, are vets enough to know that you're not meant to be seeing what's ahead of you anyway. So don't worry absolutely. about it. It's not a problem. It's, and like you said, there's no actual layers on it. It's just a grayed out facility. Mm, so sure. I'm I'm back in the where we are right now. So we're all good. Okay, oh, perfect. So yeah, I've managed to move up. Um, do I have an, a chance to attack? Do you have? You absolutely do. Yep, yeah, you absolutely do. Yeah, so you can make gonna... a movement and a, a combat action, which is an attack. So good. So I'm going to um, brawl with my chainsword. Perfect. Go for it. So uh, five to hit dice. Excellent. You just you just match. Just match your chainsaw. Okay, I will. I will need to upgrade this chainsaw at some point in the future. Um, right. So you just grit down onto the shoulder plate of this, uh, and you know, grind, manages to rev and grind the chainsaw against this. So damage is eight and four ED. So. Eight and four. Okay, so nine in total. So yeah, if you want to describe how you kill this thing. Okay, so grinding through the shoulder pad, I rip into the chest of this creature, this person, Perfect. and they and they fall to the ground, and I have to pull and yank my chainsaw out. Brilliant. This fellow. Runs up to you, goes to hit you, and he sees what you've just done to his friend, and he's quite intimidated by this. And um, he goes to hit you with the butt of his auto rifle to kind of back you off, thinking that maybe he can help his mate survive this this horrific injury, and it just misses. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's just standing there, completely miffed, and yeah, like out on his own. Oh, don't forget, your Mastiff as well moves in your turn. Okay, so um, how far can the Mastiff move, do you think? I believe it's an eight. Okay, so the Mastiff moves up to take a bite. Uh, okay, looking at that though, I think it's unsuccessful. Uh, it goes to bite and, uh, and the person narrowly dodges that one. Yep, okay. Just double check. Um, okay, yep, cool. And next is uh, Ichabon. We won't worry um, about Hannon's combat for this. Yeah, I will quickly, now that it's all happening, I will um, quickly pull out my Laz pistol and just take a shot at it. Sure thing, yep. hit but you will have to you will you do have a complication so you can either describe a complication or you take a you have to reload on the next turn um i'll 
Yeah, I'll do the gun jam and my, yep. my reload. Absolutely. And roll for damage, please. Okay. Um, what's my damage? Um, so it's 7 plus 1 EED, um, but so I, I've forgotten. Do I just roll the 1 EED? That's right, yeah, you just roll the 1. 1. 1, okay, so, yep, he just takes a shot to the chest and he is down. Cool, so, um, obviously you're in you're in darkness apart from like a dull red light that's um, emanating from the, the lights above you. Um, as I said before, this room seems to be... It's, seems to be like it's built for minor study. Um, there's research papers aligning the desks and uh, microscopes also sit on the uh, desk too, as you can see. Yeah, I run over to one of the desks and just get to one of the computers and stuff and just type in, see if I can get an idea of what was researching, what was going on or anything like that, any kind of in relevant information that we might need. Sure, uh, roll me a tech test, please. And Fabio, cool. if you'd like to roll me a scholar check, please. If I imagine you're yeah. going to take a look as well. Absolutely. So, scholar. Good. Oh. So just um, so Fabio, just skimming over the papers, um, it seems to be a lot of, of formulas for chemical compounds, but you, you're just—it's not your area of expertise, unfortunately. Um, okay. And Ikavon. Um yeah, you, you, you punch into one of the consoles, and um, at the moment it says it, it just says that the the the, um, the command console needs to be rebooted. Um, it's obviously shut down because the whole facility has gone into sort of like a lockdown mode. Um, gotcha. But as you as you go to, to leave the console, you, you you see something on one of the um, one of the slides of the microscopes, and upon closer inspection, it's, it's some kind of uh, some kind of powder. It, um, it's strange enough, it looks like sugar or sherbet, but you you can't really tell, and uh, I don't suppose you would hazard to give it a lick, um, seeing as it's just on some random slide under a microscope. But it seems to be like like small little crystalline crystalline structures, uh, like like yeah, like sugar or salt or sherbet or something like that. Mm, could a I don't know whether a Medicaid is this something like if I get my mechadendrites to. You can do a Medicaid test if you want to. Yeah. On. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. You know that the substance is organic in nature, but um, it's it's not something you've studied before. It's definitely hmm. not an edible. <laughs> <laughs> is it a poison or something? Because it, it simply it's something that you've never studied before, and um, yeah, All right. you you don't know enough about it to warrant to hazard a guess um, about what its purpose could be right now. All right. Hey, I, I found this. No idea what it is, but it seems to be something they were studying or is he oh. looking at closely. Right, yeah, I've, 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 there are some books, there's some information here about chemicals and formulae, but I can't make head nor tail of it either. Hmm. Okay. I don't think it's any more in my warehouse than it is any of yours. No, I think we, I think we move on. It might be, uh, there might be another console that has uh, more information in, or maybe uh, some sort of labelled file, maybe of, uh, or, or, or a lab to of more extensive nature. Well, it seems uh, like there's a master terminal around here somewhere, and reactivating it will reactivate the power to the area. I think if we can get find that, we might be able to turn the systems back on in this area. Yeah, good idea. You know about you know about these things, so. Yep. I'll keep my eyes out. Cool. Okay. Um, right then, I think we venture on. Um, uh, can, can we try, before I do, can I take a look at what these people or bodies are? Like, what what have we just slain, and what can we? What can we gain from looking at the 
of the bodies. Absolutely. Um, these seem like um, you've you've come across these before many times. These are gene stealer neophytes. These are cultists. Um, these are humans infected with the gene stealer um, DNA strand. Uh, crap. Yeah. This this all but confirms that Carlin, or at least a, a, a splinter of his force, are, some, are, are in this facility. Hmm. All right. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll get my flamer out there. I'll get my pistol out in the other hand. Um, anything else in this room that we haven't looked at? We've, we've taken a look at some consoles. We've looked around the edge. Um, is, there, is there anything obvious that we haven't seen yet? Uh, like having um, a desk we haven't sat at or a console that looks something different to what we've already taken a look at? That's it in this room, I'm afraid. You've had a look at the microscopes and you've tried to decipher the research paper. Um, yeah. That seems to be everything. Um, they were searching for something, but they didn't seem to find it in here. Or at least, mm -hmm. you don't know if they did or not, but they don't seem to have found it. Okay. Alright, I go to the door. Um, mm -hmm. Does it look un unlocked from the panel? As, as you approach, it, it automatically opens. Okay. And it reveals a dark corridor beyond, um, ending with, you can just about make out another door. Uh, these doors are, um, they're, they're metal frames, but they have um, a series of glass uh, square portholes going down them. So for the most part, you should be able to see what's beyond it. But this one, as you approach it, it automatically opens. So you could probably assume that the next one would if you were to approach it as well. Quite quiet doors. Uh, they don't seem to make a sound apart from like a shh. Okay. Um, knowingly, knowing that, I'll, uh, I'll head to the next door. Yep. And I'm assuming Bohannon will follow you up. And um, are the other guys following, or are you remaining in this room? No, I will be. Yeah. Where am I? Cool. Yeah. I will be. Yes, but I would like to um, try and um, approach quietly. Um, so just come forward a bit quietly and uh, hopefully try and catch um, someone uh, a little bit by surprise. Absolutely. Okay. So, Fabio, as you are by the door, you see this. The next room appears to be the main research laboratory. Inside, the Vox screen shows errors, and the flickering green text illuminates the room periodically. Scuttering can be heard in the dark as more figures move about searching for something. 